Hi, welcome to my reading of The Complete Works of Frog and Toad by Arnold Lobel. We're going to be reading from this hardcover uh, edition of Frog and Toad. If you're like me and you have kids at home who, who love a good nighttime story, this is the video for you. I've created this for, for you as parents as well as for kids. I'm no, by no means an expert on how to read to kids, but this has worked for our family and so hopefully it can work for you. How this video is going to be set up, I'm going to be reading the entire collected works of Frog and Toad in this video. In the description of the video, you're going to find hyperlinks to the different stories where if you read one one night or listen to one one night, you can just, when you go to the video, hit the next video and it, it'll take you straight to, to where the next story is going to be. What you're going to notice in this particular reading of Frog and Toad is I've added accents to Frog and Toad. I'm going to be reading the dialogue in a normal uh, American accent and I'm going to be reading the frogs in more of a European or a, or a British accent or the best way that I know how to do a European or a British accent. I'm sure by uh, any stretch of the imagination it's not going to be perfect. How I kind of conceptualize Frog and Toad is that Toad uh, by, by nature of being a, a smaller animal, kind of a pudgier animal, has more of a baritone voice and he's kind of grumpy and I kind of play him that way. And Frog, more slender, uh, more of a, uh, I don't know if this is the right word, but educated way of playing uh, Frog. He's very light and very uh, formal in his diction. And so we're gonna be reading it from, from that vantage point. You can come up with your own way of reading any story. That's the beauty of reading kids' stories is we can read them to our kids however makes them happy and however brings them joy. Also, what I've done is I've set the, the environment. I've put swamp sounds behind the story to kind of make you feel like you're in the swamp with Frog and Toad. So whenever you hear a story and you hear the crickets or the frogs, know that I've put that in there specifically to set the environment for, uh, for the story. While I'm reading, you're gonna see photos of the actual page so that you and your child, if you want to, can follow along with the story as it's being read. All that said, let's dive into the complete works of Frog and Toad by Arnold Lobel. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Frog and Toad the Complete Collection by Arnold Lobel by HarperCollins Children's Books, 2016. Stories from Frog and Toad are Friends. Spring. Frog ran up the path to Toad's house. He knocked on the front door. There was no answer. Toad! Toad! shouted Frog. Wake up! It is spring! Rah! said a voice from inside the house. Toad! Toad! cried Frog. The sun is shining. The snow is melting. Wake up! I am not here! said the voice. Frog walked into the house. It was dark. All the shutters were closed. Toad, where are you? called Frog. Go away, said the voice from a corner of the room. Toad was lying in bed. He had pulled all the covers over his head. Frog pushed Toad out of bed. He pushed him out of the house and onto the front porch. Toad blinked in the bright sun. Help! said Toad. I cannot see anything. Don't be silly, said Frog. What you see is the clear warm light of April. And it means that we can begin a whole new year together, Toad. Think of it. 
said Frog. We will skip through the meadows and run through the woods and swim in the river. In the evenings, we will sit right here on this porch and count the stars. You can count them, Frog, said Toad. I will be too tired. I am going back to bed. Toad went back into the house. He got into the bed and pulled the covers over his head again. But, Toad, cried Frog, you will miss all the fun. Listen, Frog, said Toad, how long have I been asleep? You have been asleep since November, said Frog. Well then, a little more sleep will not hurt me. Come back again and wake me up at about, um, half past May. Good night, Frog. But Toad, said Frog, I will be lonely until then. Toad did not answer. He had fallen asleep. Frog looked at Toad's calendar. The November page was still on top. Frog tore off the November page. He tore off the December page, and the January page, the February page, and the March page. He came to the April page. Frog tore off the April page, too. Then Frog ran back to Toad's bed. Toad! Toad, wake up! It's May now! <laughs> what? said Toad. Can it be May so soon? Yes, said Frog. Look at your calendar. Toad looked at the calendar. The May page was on top. Why, it, it is May, said Toad as he climbed out of bed. Then he and Frog ran outside to see how the world was looking in the spring. The Story One day in summer, Frog was not feeling well. Toad said, Frog, you are looking quite green. But I always look green, said Frog. I am a frog. Today you look very green, even for a frog, said Toad. Get into my bed and rest. Toad made Frog a cup of hot tea. Frog drank the tea, and then he said, Tell me a story while I am resting. All right, said Toad. Let me think of a story to tell you. Toad thought and thought, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. I will go out on the front porch and walk up and down, said Toad. Perhaps that will help me think of a story. Toad walked up and down on the porch for a long time, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Then Toad went into the house and stood on his head. Why are you standing on your head? asked Frog. I hope that if I stand on my head, it will help me to think of a story, said Toad. Toad stood on his head for a long time, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Then Toad poured a glass of water over his head. Why are you pouring water over your head? asked Frog. I hope that if I pour water over my head, it will help me to think of a story, said Toad. Toad poured many glasses of water over his head, but he could not think of a story to tell Frog. Then Toad began to bang his head against the wall. Why are you banging your head against the wall? asked Frog. I hope that if I bang my head against the wall hard enough, it will help me to think of a story, said Toad. 
Uh, I think I'm feeling much better now, Toad, said Frog. I do not think I need a story anymore. Then you get out of bed and let me get into it, said Toad, because now I feel terrible, Frog said. Would you like me to tell you a story, Toad? Yes, said Toad, if you know one. Once upon a time, said Frog, there were two good friends, a frog and a toad. The frog was not feeling well. He asked his friend the toad to tell him a story. The toad could not think of a story. He walked up and down on the porch, but he could not think of a story. He stood on his head, but he could not think of a story. He poured water on his head, but he could not think of a story. He banged his head against the wall, but he could not think of a story. Then the toad did not feel so well, and the frog was feeling better. So the toad went to bed, and the frog got up and told him a story. The end. How was that, Toad? said Frog. But Toad did not answer. He had fallen asleep. A Lost Button Toad and Frog went for a long walk. They walked across a large meadow. They walked in the woods. They walked along the river. At last, they went back home to Toad's house. Oh, drat, said Toad. Not only do my feet hurt, but I have lost one of the buttons on my jacket. Don't worry, said Frog. We will go back to all the places where we walked. We will soon find your button. They walked back to the large meadow. They began to look for the button in the tall grass. Here's your button, cried Frog. That is not my button, said Toad. That button is black. My button was white. Toad put the black button in his pocket. A sparrow flew down. Excuse me, said the sparrow. Did you lose a button? I found one. That is not my button, said Toad. That button has two holes. My button had four holes. Toad put the button with two holes in his pocket. They went back to the woods and looked on the dark path. Here's your button, said Frog. That is not my button, cried Toad. That button is small. My button was big. Toad put the small button in his pocket. A raccoon came out from behind a tree. I heard you were looking for a button, he said. He is one that I just found. That is not my button, wailed Toad. The button is square. My button was round. Toad put the square button in his pocket. Frog and Toad went back to the river. They looked for the button in the mud. Here's your button, said Frog. That is not my button, shouted Toad. That button is thin. My button was thick. Toad put the thin button in his pocket. He was very angry. He jumped up and down and screamed, The whole world is covered with buttons, and not one of them is mine. Toad ran home and slammed the door. There on the floor, he saw his white four-hold, big, round, 
thick button. Ah, oh, said Toad. It was here all the time. What a load of trouble I have made for Frog. Toad took all of the buttons out of his pocket. He took his sewing box down from the shelf. Toad sewed the buttons all over his jacket. The next day, Toad gave his jacket to Frog. Frog thought it was beautiful. He put it on and jumped for joy. None of the buttons fell off. Toad had sewed them on very well. A swim. Toad and Frog went down to the river. What a day for a swim, said Frog. Yes, said Toad. I will go behind these rocks and put on my bathing suit. I don't wear a bathing suit, said Frog. Well, I do, said Toad. After I put on my bathing suit, you must not look at me until I get in the water. Why not? asked Frog. Because I look funny in my bathing suit. That is why, said Toad. Frog closed his eyes when Toad came out from behind the rocks. Toad was wearing his bathing suit. Don't peek! Frog and Toad jumped into the water. They swam all afternoon. Frog swam fast and made big splashes. Toad swam slowly and made smaller splashes. A turtle came along the riverbank. Frog, tell that turtle to go away! I do not want him to see me in my bathing suit when I come out of the river. Frog swam over to the turtle. Turtle, said Frog, you have to go away. Why should I? asked the turtle. Because Toad thinks that he looks funny in his bathing suit. And he does not want you to see him, said Frog. Some lizards were standing nearby. Ha! Does Toad really look funny in his bathing suit? They asked. A snake crawled out of the grass. If Toad looks funny in his bathing suit, said the snake, then I, for one, want to see him. We want to see him too, said the dragonflies. Me too, said a field mouse. I have not seen anything funny for a long time. Frog swam back to Toad. I am very sorry, Toad, he said. Everyone wants to see how you will look. Then I will stay right here until they go away, said Toad. The turtle and the lizards and the snake and the dragonflies and the field mouse all sat on the riverbank. They waited for Toad to come out of the water. Please, cried Toad, please go away. But no one went away. Toad was getting colder and colder. He was beginning to shiver and sneeze. I will have to come out of the water, said Toad. I am catching a cold. Toad climbed out of the river, the water dripping out of his bathing suit and down onto his feet. The turtle laughed. The lizards laughed. The snake laughed. The field mouse laughed. (laughs) And Frog laughed. What are you laughing at, Frog? said Toad. I'm laughing at you, Toad, said Frog. 
Because, well, you do look funny in your bathing suit. Of course I do, said Toad. Then he picked up his clothes and went home. The Letter Toad was sitting on his front porch. Frog came along and said, What's the matter, Toad? You are looking sad. Yes, said Toad. This is my sad time of day. It is the time when I wait for the mail to come. It always makes me very unhappy. Why is that? asked Frog. Because I never get any mail, said Toad. Not ever? asked Frog. No, never. No one has ever sent me a letter. Every day, my mailbox is empty. That is why waiting for the mail is a sad time for me. Frog and Toad sat on the porch, feeling sad together. Then Frog said, I have to go home now, Toad. There's something that uh, I must do. Frog hurried home. He found a pencil and a piece of paper. He wrote on the paper. He put the paper in an envelope. On the envelope he wrote, A letter for Toad. Frog ran out of his house. He saw a snail that he knew. Snail, said Frog. Please take this letter to Toad's house and put it in his mailbox. Sure, said the snail. Right away. Then Frog ran back to Toad's house. Toad was in bed taking a nap. Toad, said Frog, I think you should get up and wait for the mail to come some more. No, said Toad, I am tired of waiting for the mail. Frog looked out of the window at Toad's mailbox. The snail was not there yet. Toad, said Frog. You never know when someone may send you a letter. No, no, said Toad. I do not think anyone will ever send me a letter. Frog looked out of the window. The snail was not there yet. But, Toad, said Frog, someone may send you a letter today. Don't. Be silly, said Toad. No one has ever sent me a letter before, and no one will send me a letter today. Frog looked out of the window. The snail was still not there. Frog, why do you keep looking out of the window? asked Toad. Because now I am waiting for the mail said Frog. But there will not be any, said Toad. Oh, yes there will, said Frog, because I have sent you a letter. You have? said Toad. What did you write in the letter? Frog said, I wrote, Dear Toad, I am glad that you are my best friend. Your best friend, Frog. Oh, said Toad, that makes a very good letter. Then Frog and Toad went out onto the front porch to wait for the mail. They sat there feeling happy together. Frog and Toad waited a long time. Four days later, the snail got to Toad's house and gave him the letter from Frog. Toad was very pleased to have it. Stories from Frog and Toad 
together. A list. One morning, Toad sat in bed. I have many things to do, he said. I will write them all down on a list so that I can remember them. Toad wrote on a piece of paper a list of things to do today. Then he wrote, wake up. I have done that, said Toad, and he crossed out, wake up. Then Toad wrote other things on the paper. A list of things to do today. Wake up, eat breakfast, get dressed, go to Frog's house, take a walk with Frog, eat lunch, take a nap, play games with Frog, eat supper, go to sleep. There, said Toad. Now my day is all written down. He got out of bed and had something to eat. Then Toad crossed out, eat breakfast. Toad took his clothes out of the wardrobe and put them on. Then he crossed out, get dressed. Toad put the list in his pocket. He opened the door and walked out into the morning. Soon, Toad was at Frog's front door. He took the list from his pocket and crossed out, go to Frog's house. Toad knocked at the door. Hello, said Frog. Look at my list of things to do, said Toad. Oh, said Frog. That is very nice, Toad said. My list tells me that we will go for a walk. All right, said Frog. I am ready. Frog and Toad went on a long walk. Then Toad took the list from his pocket again. He crossed out, take walk with Frog. Just then, there was a strong wind. It blew the list out of Toad's hand. The list blew high up into the air. Help! cried Toad. My list is blowing away. What will I do without my list? Hurry, said Frog. We will run and catch it. No, shouted Toad. I cannot do that. Why not? asked Frog. Because, wailed Toad, running after my list is not one of the things that I wrote on my list of things to do. Frog ran after the list. He ran over hills and swamps, but the list blew on and on. At last, Frog came back to Toad. I am sorry, gasped Frog, but but I could not catch your list. Blah, said Toad. I cannot remember any of the things that were on my list of things to do, I will just have to sit here and do nothing, said Toad. Toad sat and did nothing. Frog sat with him. After a long time, Frog said, Toad, it's getting dark. We should be going to sleep now. Go to sleep! shouted Toad. That was the last thing on my list. Toad wrote on the ground with a stick. Go to sleep. Then he crossed out. Go to sleep. There, said Toad. Now my day is all crossed out. I am glad, said Frog. Then Frog and Toad went right to sleep. 
the garden. Frog was in his garden. Toad came walking by. What a fine garden you have, Frog, he said. Yes, said Frog. It is very nice, but it was hard work. I wish I had a garden, said Toad. Here are some flower seeds. Plant them in the ground, said Frog, and soon you will have a garden. How, how soon? asked Toad. Quite soon, said Frog. Toad ran home. He planted the flower seeds. Now, seeds, said Toad, start growing. Toad walked up and down a few times. The seeds did not start to grow. Toad put his head close to the ground and said loudly, Now, seeds, start growing! Toad looked at the ground again. The seeds did not start to grow. Toad put his head very close to the ground and shouted, Now, seeds, start growing! Frog came running up the path. What is all this noise? He asked. My sage will not grow, said Toad. You are shouting too much, said Frog. These poor seeds are afraid to grow. My seeds are afraid to grow? Asked Toad. Of course. Leave them alone for a few days. Let the sun shine on them. Let the rain fall on them. Soon your seeds will start to grow. That night, Toad looked out his window. Drat, said Toad. My seeds have not started to grow. They must be afraid of the dark. Toad went out of his garden with some candles. I will read the sage a story, said Toad. Then they will not be afraid. Toad read a long story to his seeds. All the next day, Toad sang songs to his seeds. And all the next day, Toad read poems to his seeds. And all the next day, Toad played music for his seeds. Toad looked at the ground. The seeds still did not start to grow. What shall I do? cried Toad. These must be the most frightened seeds in the whole world. Then Toad felt very tired, and he fell asleep. Toad, Toad, wake up, said Frog. Look at your garden. Toad looked at his garden. Little green plants were coming up out of the ground. At last, shouted Toad, my seeds have stopped being afraid to grow. And now you will have a nice garden too, said Frog. Yes, said Toad, but you were right, Frog. It was very hard work. Cookies. Toad baked some cookies. These cookies smell very good, said Toad. He ate one. And they taste even better, he said. Toad ran to Frog's house. Frog! Frog! cried Toad. Taste these cookies that I have made. Frog ate one of the cookies. These are the best cookies I have ever eaten, said Frog. Frog and Toad ate many cookies, one after another. You know, Toad, said Frog with his mouth full, I think we should stop eating. We will soon be sick. You are right, said Toad. Let us eat just... 
one last cookie, and then we will stop. Frog and Toad ate one last cookie. There were many cookies left in the bowl. Frog, said Toad, let us eat one last, very last cookie, and then we will stop. Frog and Toad ate one very last cookie. We must stop eating, cried Toad, as he ate another. Yes, said Frog, reaching for a cookie. We need willpower. What is willpower? asked Toad. Well, willpower is trying hard not to do something that you really want to do, said Frog. You mean like trying not to eat all of these cookies, asked Toad. Well, that's right, said Frog. Frog put the cookies in a box. There, he said. Now we will not eat any more cookies. But we can open the box, said Toad. That is true, said Frog. Frog tied some string around the box. There, he said. Now we will not eat any more cookies. But we can cut the string and open the box, said Toad. That, that is true, said Frog. Frog got a ladder. He put the box up on a high shelf. There, said Frog. Now we will not eat any more cookies. But we can climb the ladder and take the box down from the shelf and cut the string and open the box, said Toad. That is true, said Frog. Frog climbed the ladder and took the box down from the shelf. He cut the string and opened the box. Frog took the box outside. He shouted in a loud voice, Hey, birds! Here are cookies! Birds came from everywhere. They picked up all the cookies in their beaks and flew away. Now we have no more cookies to eat, said Toad sadly. Not even one. Yes, said Frog. But we have lots and lots of willpower. You may keep it all, Frog, said Toad. I'm going home now to bake a cake. Dragons and Giants Frog and Toad were reading a book together. The people in this book are brave, said Toad. They fight dragons and giants, and they are never afraid. I wonder if we are brave, said Frog. Frog and Toad looked into a mirror. We look brave, said Frog. Yes, but are we? asked Toad. Frog and Toad went outside. We can try to climb this mountain, said Frog. That should tell us if we are brave. Frog went leaping over rocks, and Toad came puffing up behind him. They came to a dark cave. A big snake came out of the cave. Hello, lunch, said the snake when he saw Frog and Toad. He opened his wide mouth. Frog and Toad jumped away. Toad was shaking. I am not afraid, he cried. They climbed higher and they heard a loud noise. Many large stones were rolling down the mountain. It's an avalanche, cried Toad. Frog and Toad jumped away. Frog was trembling. I am not afraid, he shouted. They came to the top of the mountain. The shadow of a hawk fell over them. Frog and Toad jumped under a rock. The hawk flew away. We are not afraid! We are not afraid! 
screamed Frog and Toad at the same time. Then they ran down the mountain very fast. They ran past the place where they saw the avalanche. They ran past the place where they saw the snake. They ran all the way to Toad's house. Frog, I am glad to have a brave friend like you, said Toad. He jumped into the bed and pulled the covers over his head. And I am happy to know a brave person like you, Toad, said Frog. He jumped into the wardrobe and shut the door. Toad stayed in bed, and Frog stayed in the wardrobe. They stayed there for a long time, just feeling brave together. The Dream Toad was asleep, and he was having a dream. He was on a stage, and he was wearing a costume. Toad looked out into the dark. Frog was sitting in the theater. A strange voice from far away said, Presenting the greatest toad in all of the world. Toad took a deep bow. Frog looked smaller as he shouted, Hooray for Toad! Toad will now play the piano very well said the strange voice. Toad played the piano, and he did not miss a note. Frog! cried Toad. Can you play the piano like this? No! said Frog. It seemed to Toad like Frog looked even smaller. Toad will now walk on a high wire, and he will not fall down, said the voice. Toad walked on the high wire. Frog, cried Toad, can you do tricks like this? No, peeped Frog, who looked very, very small. Toad will now dance, and he will be wonderful, said the voice. Frog, can you be as wonderful as this, said Toad as he danced all over the stage. There was no answer. Toad looked out into the theater. Frog was so small that he could not be seen or heard. Frog, Toad said, where are you? There was still no answer. Frog, what have I done? cried Toad. Then the voice said, the greatest Toad will now. Shut up! screamed Toad. Frog! Frog! Where have you gone? Toad was spinning in the dark. Come back, Frog! He shouted. I will be lonely. I am right here, said Frog. Frog was standing near Toad's bed. Wake up, Toad, he said. Frog, is that really you? said Toad. Of course it is me, said Frog. And are you your own right size? asked Toad. Yes, I I think so, said Frog. Toad looked at the sunshine coming through the window. Frog, he said. I am so glad that you came over. I always do said Frog. Then Frog and Toad ate a big breakfast. And after that, they spent a fine, long day together. Stories from Frog and Toad All Year Down the Hill Frog knocked at Toad's door. Toad, wake up, he cried. Come out and say how wonderful the winter is. I will not, said Toad. I am in my warm bed. Winter is beautiful, said Frog. Come out and have fun. Ah, 
said Toad. I do not have any winter clothes. Frog came into the house. I have brought you some things to wear, he said. Frog pushed a coat down over the top of Toad. Frog pulled sweatpants up over the bottom of Toad. He put a hat and scarf on Toad's head. Help! cried Toad. My best friend is trying to kill me! I'm only trying to get you ready for winter, said Frog. Frog and Toad went outside. They tramped through the snow. We will ride down this big hill on my sled, said Frog. Not me, said Toad. Do not be afraid, said Frog. I will be with you on the sled. It will be a fine, fast ride. Toad, you sit in the front. I will sit right behind you. The sled began to move down the hill. Here we go, said Frog. There was a bump. Frog fell off the sled. Toad rushed past the trees and rocks. Frog, I am glad that you are here, said Toad. Toad leapt over a snowbank. I could not steal the sled without you, Frog, he said. You're right. Winter is fun. A crow flew nearby. Hello, crow, shouted Toad. Look at Frog and me. We can ride a sled better than anybody in the world. But Toad, said the crow, you are alone on the sled. Toad looked around. He saw that Frog was not there. I am all alone, screamed Toad. Bang! The sled hit a tree. Thud. The sled hit a rock. Plop. The sled dived into the snow. Frog came running down the hill. He pulled Toad out of the snow. I saw everything, said Frog. You did very well by yourself. I did not, said Toad. But there is one thing that I can do all by myself. What is that? asked Frog. I can go home, said Toad. Winter may be beautiful, but bed is much better. The Corner Frog and Toad were caught in the rain. They ran to Frog's house. I am all wet, said Toad. The day is spoiled. Have some tea and cake, said Frog. The rain will stop. If you stand near the stove, your clothes will soon be dry. I will tell you a story while we are waiting, said Frog. Oh, good, said Toad. When I was small, not much bigger than a tadpole, said Frog, my father said to me, Son, this is a cold, grey day, but spring is just around the corner. I wanted spring to come. I went out to find that corner. I walked down a path in the woods until I came to a corner. I went around the corner to see if spring was on the other side. And was it? Asked Toad. No, said Frog. There was only a pine tree, three pebbles, and some dry grass. I walked in the meadow. Soon I came to another corner. I went around the corner to see if spring was there. Did you find it? Asked Toad. No, said Frog. There was only an old worm asleep on a tree stump. I walked along the river until I came to another corner. I went around the corner to look for spring. Was it there? Asked Toad. 
No, said Frog. There was only some wet mud and, and a lizard who was chasing his tail. You must have been tired, said Toad. I was tired, said Frog, and it started to rain. I went back home. When I got there, said Frog, I found another corner. It was the corner of my house. Did you go around it? asked Toad. I went around that corner too, said Frog. What did you see? asked Toad. I saw the sun coming out, said Frog. I saw the birds sitting and singing in the trees. I saw my mother, my father, working in the garden. I saw flowers in the garden. You found it, cried Toad. Yes, said Frog. I was very happy. I had found the corner that spring was just around. Look, Frog, said Toad. You were right. The rain has stopped. Frog and Toad hurried inside. They ran around the corner of Frog's house to make sure that spring had come again. Ice Cream One hot summer's day, Frog and Toad sat by the pond. I wish we had some sweet, cold ice cream, said Frog. What a good idea, said Toad. Wait right here, Frog. I will be back soon. Toad went to the shop. He bought two big ice cream cones. Toad licked one of the cones. Frog likes chocolate best, said Toad. And so do I. Toad walked along the path. A large, soft drop of chocolate ice cream slipped down his arm. This ice cream is melting in the sun, said Toad. Toad walked faster. Many drops of melting ice cream flew through the air. They fell down on Toad's head. I must hurry back to Frog, he cried. More and more of the ice cream was melting. It dripped down on Toad's jacket. It splattered on his trousers and on his feet. Where is the path? cried Toad. I Cannot see! Frog sat by the pond, waiting for Toad. A mouse ran by. I just saw something awful, cried the mouse. It was big and brown. Something covered with sticks and leaves is moving this way, cried a squirrel. Here comes a thing with horns! shouted a rabbit. Run for your life! What can it be? asked Frog. Frog hid behind a rock. He saw the thing coming. It was big and brown. It was covered with sticks and leaves. It had two horns. Frog! cried the thing. Where are you? Good heavens! said Frog. That thing is Toad. Toad fell into the pond. He sank to the bottom and came up again. Drat, said Toad. All of our sweet, cold ice cream has washed away. Never mind, said Frog. I know what we can do. Frog and Toad quickly ran back to the shop. Then they sat in the shade of a large tree and ate their chocolate ice cream cones together. The Surprise It was October. The leaves had fallen off the trees. They were lying on the ground. I will go to Toad's house, said Frog. I will rake all the leaves that have fallen on his lawn. Toad will be surprised. Frog took a rake out of the garden shed. Toad looked out of his window. These messy leaves have covered everything, said Toad. 
he took a rake out of the cupboard. I will run over to Frog's house. I will rake all of his leaves. Frog will be very pleased. Frog ran through the woods so that Toad would not see him. Toad ran through the high grass so that Frog would not see him. Frog came to Toad's house. He looked in the window. Good, said Frog. Toad is out. He will never know who raked his legs. Toad got to Frog's house. He looked in the window. Good, said Toad. Frog is not home. He will never guess who raked his leaves. Frog worked hard. He raked the leaves into a pile. Soon, Toad's lawn was clean. Frog picked up his rake and started home. Toad pushed and pulled on the rake. He raked the leaves into a pile. Soon, there was not a single leaf in Frog's front garden. Toad took his rake and started home. A wind came. It blew across the land. The pile of leaves that Frog had raked for Toad blew everywhere. The pile of leaves that Toad had raked for Frog blew everywhere. When Frog got home, he said, Tomorrow I will clean up the leaves that are all over my front lawn. How surprised Toad must be. When Toad got home, he said, Tomorrow I will get to work and rake all of my own leaves. How surprised Frog must be. That night, Frog and Toad were both happy when they each turned out the light and went to bed. Christmas Eve On Christmas Eve, Toad cooked a big dinner. He decorated the tree. Frog is light, said Toad. Toad looked at his clock. He remembered it was broken. The hands of the clock did not move. Toad opened the front door. He looked out into the night. Frog was not there. I am I'm worried, said Toad. What if something terrible has happened, said Toad. What if Frog has fallen into a deep hole and can't get out? I'll never see him again. Toad opened the door once more. Frog was not on the path. What if Frog is lost in the woods? Said Toad. What if he is cold and wet and hungry? What if Frog is being chased by a big animal with many sharp teeth? What if he is being eaten up? Cried Toad. My friend and I will never have another Christmas together. Toad found some rope in the cellar. I will pull Frog out of the hole with this, said Toad. Toad found a lantern in the attic. Frog will see this light. I will show him the way out of the woods, said Toad. Toad found a frying pan in the kitchen. I will hit that big animal with this, said Toad. All his teeth will fall out. Frog, do not worry, cried Toad. I am coming to help you. Toad ran out of the house. There was Frog. Hello, Toad, he said. I am very sorry to be late. I was wrapping your present. You are not at the bottom of a hole? asked Frog. No, said Frog. You're not lost in the woods, asked Toad. No, said Frog. You are not being eaten by a big animal, asked Toad. No, not at all. Oh, Frog, said Toad. I am so glad to be spending Christmas with you. Toad opened his present from Frog. It was a beautiful new clock. 
the two friends sat by the fire. The hands of the clock moved to show the hours of a Merry Christmas Eve. Stories from Days with Frog and Toad. Tomorrow. Toad woke up. Drat, he said. This house is a mess. I have so much work to do. Frog looked through the window. Toad, you all right, said Frog. It is a mess. Toad pulled the covers over his head. I will do it tomorrow, said Toad. Today I will take life easy. Frog came into the house. Toad, said Frog, your trousers and jacket are lying on the floor. Tomorrow, said Toad from under the covers. Your kitchen sink is filled with dirty dishes, said Frog. Tomorrow, said Toad. There is dust on your chairs. Tomorrow, said Toad. Your windows need scrubbing, said Frog. Your plants need watering. Tomorrow, cried Toad. I will do it all tomorrow, Toad sat on the edge of his bed. Uh, I feel down in the dumps. Why? asked Frog. I'm thinking about tomorrow, said Toad. I'm thinking about all the many things that I will have to do. Yes, said Frog. Tomorrow will be a very hard day for you. But Frog, said Toad. If I pick up my trousers and jacket right now, then I will not have to pick them up tomorrow, will I? No, said Frog. You will not have to. Toad picked up his clothes. He put them in the wardrobe. Frog, said Toad. If I wash my dishes right now, then I will not have to wash them tomorrow, will I? No said Frog. You will not have to. Toad washed and dried his dishes. He put them in the cupboard. Frog, said Toad. If I dust my chairs and scrub my windows and water my plants right now, then I will not have to do it tomorrow, will I? No, said Frog. You will not have to do any of it. Toad dusted his chairs. He scrubbed his windows. He watered his plants. There, said Toad. Now I feel better. I'm not down in the dumps anymore. Why? asked Frog. Because I have done all that work, said Toad. Now I can save tomorrow for something that I really want to do. What is that? asked Frog. Tomorrow, said Toad, I can just take life easy. Toad went back to bed. He pulled the covers over his head and fell asleep. The Kite Frog and Toad went out to fly a kite. They went to a large meadow where the wind was strong. Our kite will fly up and up, said Frog. It will fly all the way up to the top of the sky. Toad, said Frog. I will hold the ball of string. You hold the kite and run. Toad ran across the meadow. He ran as fast as his short legs could carry him. The kite went up in the air. It fell to the ground with a bump. Toad heard laughter. Three robins were sitting in a bush. That kite will not fly, said the robins. You may as well give up. 
Toad ran back to Frog. Frog, said Toad, this kite will not fly. I give up. We must make a second try, said Frog. Wave the kite over your head. Perhaps that will make it fly. Toad ran back across the meadow. He waved the kite over his head. The kite went up in the air and then fell down with a thud. What a joke, said the robins. That kite will never get off the ground. Toad ran back to Frog. This kite is a joke, he said. It will never get off the ground. We have to make a third try, said Frog. Wave the kite over your head and jump up and down. Perhaps that will make it fly. Toad ran across the meadow again. He waved the kite over his head. He jumped up and down. The kite went up in the air and crashed down into the grass. That kite is junk, said the robins. Throw it away and go home. Toad ran back to Frog. This kite is junk, he said. I think we should throw it away and go home. Toad, said Frog, we need one more try. Wave the kite over your head, jump up and down and shout, Up, kite, up! Toad ran across the meadow. He waved the kite over his head. He jumped up and down. He shouted, Up, kite, up! The kite flew into the air. It climbed higher and higher. We did it! cried Toad. Yes, said Frog. If a running try did not work, and a running and waving try did not work, and a running, waving, and jumping try did not work, I knew that a running, waving, jumping, and shouting try just had to work. The robins flew out of the bush, but they could not fly as high as the kite. Frog and Toad sat and watched their kite. It seemed to be flying way at the top of the sky. Shivers. The night was cold and dark. Listen to the wind howling in the trees, said Frog. What a fine time for a ghost story. Toad moved deeper into his chair. Toad, asked Frog, don't you like to be scared? Don't you like to feel the shivers? I am not too sure, said Toad. Frog made a fresh pot of tea. He sat down and began a story. When I was small, my mother and father and I went out for a picnic. On the way home, we lost our way. My mother was worried. We must get home, she said. We do not want to meet the old dark frog. Who is that? I asked. A terrible ghost said my father. He comes out at night and eats little frog children for supper. Toad sipped his tea. Frog, he asked, are you making this up? Maybe yes and maybe no, said Frog. My mother and father went to search for a path, said Frog. They told me to wait until they came back. I sat under a tree and waited. The woods became dark. I was afraid. Then I saw two huge eyes. It was the old dark frog. He was standing near me. Frog? asked Toad. Did this really happen? Maybe it did, and maybe it didn't, said Frog. Frog went on with the story. The dark frog put
pulled me a skipping rope out of his pocket. I am not hungry now, said the dark frog. I have eaten too many tasty frog children. But after I've skipped one hundred times, I will be hungry again. Then I will eat you. The dark frog tied one end of the rope to a tree. Turn for me, he shouted. I turned the rope for the dark frog. He jumped twenty times. I am beginning to get hungry, said the dark frog. He jumped fifty times. I am getting hungrier, said the dark frog. He jumped ninety times. I am very hungry now, said the dark frog. What happened then? Asked Toad. I had to save my life, said Frog. I ran around and around the tree with the rope. I tied up the old dark frog. He roared and screamed. I ran away fast. I found my mother and father, said Frog. We came safely home. Frog. Was that a true story? Maybe it was, and maybe it wasn't, said Frog. Frog and Toad sat close by the fire. They were scared. The teacups shook in their hands. They were having the shivers. It was a good, warm feeling. The Hat On Toad's birthday... Frog gave him a hat. Toad was delighted. Happy birthday, said Frog. Toad put on the hat. It fell down over his eyes. I'm sorry, said Frog. That hat is much too big for you. I will give you something else. No, said Toad. This hat is your present to me. I like it. I will wear it the way it is. Frog and Toad went for a walk. Toad tripped over a rock. He bumped into a tree. He fell in a hole. Frog, said Toad, I can't see anything. I will not be able to wear your beautiful present. This is a sad birthday for me. Frog and Toad were sad for a while. Then Frog said, Toad, here is what you must do. Tonight, when you go to bed, you must think some very big thoughts. Those big thoughts will make your head grow larger. In the morning, your new hat may fit. What a good idea, said Toad. That night when Toad went to bed, he thought the biggest thoughts that he could think. Toad thought about giant sunflowers. He thought about tall oak trees. He thought about high mountains covered with snow. Then Toad fell asleep. Frog came into Toad's house. He came in quietly. Frog found the hat and took it to his house. Frog poured some water on the hat. He put the hat in a warm place to dry. It began to shrink. That hat grew smaller and smaller. Frog went back to Toad's house. Toad was still fast asleep. Frog put the hat back on the hook where he found it. When Toad woke up in the morning, he put the hat on his head. It was just the right size. Toad ran to Frog's house. Frog! Frog! He cried. All those big thoughts have made my head much larger. Now I can wear your present. Frog and Toad went for a walk. Toad did not trip over a rock. He did not bump into a tree. He did not fall into a hole. It turned out to be a very pleasant day after Toad's birthday. Alone. Toad went to Frog's house. He found a note on the door. 
the note said, Dear Toad, I am not home. I went out. I want to be alone. Alone? said Toad. Frog has me for a friend. Why does he want to be alone? Toad looked through the windows. He looked in the garden. He did not see Frog. Toad went to the woods. Frog was not there. He went to the meadow. Frog was not there. Toad went down to the river. There was Frog. He was sitting on an island by himself. Poor Frog. He must be very sad. I'll cheer him up. Toad ran home. He made sandwiches. He made a jug of iced tea. He put everything in a basket. Toad hurried back to the river. Frog! He shouted. It's me! It's your best friend! Toad! Frog was too far away to hear. Toad took off his jacket and waved it like a flag. Frog was too far away to see. Toad shouted and waved, but it was no use. Frog sat on the island. He did not see or hear Toad. A turtle swam by. Toad climbed on the turtle's back. Turtle, said Toad, carry me to that island. Frog is there. He wants to be alone. If Frog wants to be alone, said the turtle, why don't you leave him alone? Maybe you are right, said Toad. Maybe Frog does not want to see me. Maybe he does not want me to be his friend anymore. Yes, maybe, said the turtle as he swam to the island. Frog! cried Toad. I am sorry for all the foolish things I do. I'm sorry for all the silly things I say. Please, be my friend again. Toad slipped off the turtle with a splash fell in the river. Frog pulled Toad up onto the island. Toad looked in the basket. The sandwiches were wet. The jug of iced tea was empty. Our lunch is spoiled, said Toad. I made it for you, Frog, so that you would be happy. But Toad, said Frog, I am happy. I am very happy. This morning when I woke up, I felt good because the sun was shining. I felt good because I was a frog. And I felt good because I have you for a friend. I wanted to be alone. I wanted to think about how wonderful everything is. Oh, said Toad. I suppose that is a very good reason for wanting to be alone. Now, said Frog, I will be glad not to be alone. Let's eat lunch. Frog and Toad stayed on the island all afternoon. They ate wet sandwiches without iced tea. They were two close friends sitting alone together. This has been Frog and Toad, the complete collection by Arnold Lobel, read by Stephen Keane.